Welcome back to the wizard's backyard again. This time we're going to do a video on six cars that are no-brainer buys. You should just buy them if you're looking for a car. Let's get started. Recently I've been getting a lot of questions about which car a person should buy, whether it be trucks, SUVs, this and that. And I'm going to list six cars that, from experience and seeing them in and out of shops and also knowing people that have owned them, that would be a no-brainer buy. And what I mean by that is, as long as it's been upkept, good service, it's not been wrecked, it's not a flood car, obviously those kinds of cars, you shouldn't buy those. But if those things have been met, and it's a good condition car, then these cars are cars you can buy with confidence. It's just like, should I buy this car? And I would say, yes, I don't even need to talk about it anymore. You should buy that car. That's what we're talking about today. Also, the cars I'll be listing today are up to $10,000. I'm not talking about a $59,000 brand new car. I'm talking about up to $10,000. You're looking for a family car, SUV, a truck, but you've got five, ten thousand that you can spend. That's exactly what we're looking at today. So without further ado, we'll start off with car number one, 2000 to 2005 Buick LeSabre. Now you guys knew I was going to say that. You guys know I'm an advocate for the Buick LeSabre. You already know that. But these have the 3.8 V6 and automatic transmission they easily get 30 miles per gallon on the highway, almost as good as a Honda Accord or something like that. They're extremely, extremely reliable. And when they do break, because every car in the world is going to break, these are very much less likely to break, but when they do, the parts are cheap, they're plentiful, and they're very easy to work on. If you take a Buick LeSabre to your local mechanic, he's not going to have a fit of rage, I don't work on those, or get all pissed off, he's going to be like, oh yeah, bring it in. I can easily fix that for you. These cars are known to last three to 400,000 miles. I have serviced several in the 400,000 mile range, and they're still going. Now, I'll bet they've replaced parts over the years, a control arm, a starter, an alternator, water pump, struts, things like that. Those are normal wear and tear items, but the car is still on the road getting 30 miles per gallon. You can expect to pay around two to five thousand dollars for one of these, maybe a little more if it's like immaculate low mileage. But that's definitely a good family car that's not going to break the bank to buy it nor to maintain it. These are known to have the little coolant elbows that are underneath the alternator start to leak. The, the original ones are plastic. Once you replace these with the metal upgrades, it's nothing to even think about ever again. It's very easy to replace these. And they do have some intake gasket leaks here or there, but again, it's not hard to replace these. I can almost replace them blindfolded. It's not a big deal. But it's very rare that that happens. So on to the next one. So if you're in the market for a half-ton truck, and you're looking at the prices, and you're like me, you're like 98 grand for a truck, oh, hell no. I ain't paying that. Trust me, guys, I I've looked at that, and it's just shocking. But if you have 10 grand, five to ten grand, there are some trucks out there that are still going to be good trucks and do the work for you. That is the 99 to 2006 Chevy Silverado or the GMC Sierra. Either one would be fine. Now you notice I don't go past the 2006 range because when you get into 07, 08, and 09, we start to get into the garbage active fuel management. And we all know that those are trash. And when they fail, it grenades the engine. It can grenade the engine. Once those problems are fixed, you can upgrade them to a DOD delete. It's kind of what it's called, or the AFM delete. Then they're just as reliable as the older models. But it just makes sense just to get the older model. These have the 4.8 or the 5.3 LS-based V8. No, they're not an LS engine, but they are heavily based on the LS engine. They're called the Vortec 5.3 or 4.8. The six liters, you could get them in special edition trucks or in three quarter tons, but we're just talking about the budget half ton truck. These can have a manual transmission or you can get them in automatic. Four by four, two wheel drive, those are up to you what you're looking for, what you're needing. 
but any of them would be good. Again, the common theme on all of these are the parts are plentiful, readily available. They're cheap to purchase, relatively cheap compared to high-end cars. And the LS-based V8 is so easy to work on. I mean, it's another one of those that I can work on blindfolded. There's usually a lot of room around it. They're not ultra complicated. It is so, so, it's nice. It's nice that it's so easy to work on. A lot of people that are somewhat mechanically inclined can fix these themselves and save a lot of money. These have decent towing, hauling. Obviously, if you're gonna seriously tow heavy, you're gonna need a one ton or something like that. You don't need to look at half tons, but it can tow a car, it can to tow a small camper, or it can tow a small trailer or this or that. No problem with that. There are literally, and I mean literally, millions of these trucks on the road, and a lot of them still on the road. So even if you had to cheap out and get salvage yard parts, they're everywhere, guys. They're all over the place. And again, these are the five to $10,000 range. You can get a two-wheel drive, 4.8, half ton, 7,500 bucks, eight grand, sometimes 10, just depending on the condition. If you jump into four by four extended cab, and you, you may pay a little over 10, but it's going to be roughly in that range. Just like the SS Silverado you guys just saw a video on, I got it for five grand and I got my five grand back from the little accident from the delivery driver, but there are deals to be had. Unfortunately, the salt has gotten to that one and it's just really wrecked the thing. The engine and transmission though, 190,000 miles and they themselves operate like they're brand new. If you're looking for a midsize SUV, 2004 to 2009 Lexus RX 350. These things are all over the place. They are somewhat stylish, they look nice, and they are bulletproof, bulletproof. I mean, they are bulletproof. Video Bob just bought him a newer model, a little bit newer than 09, and he knows the secret here. He knows they are dead reliable, and they're very comfortable and very nice. As everyone probably already knows, a Lexus is a higher-end version of a Toyota, which means you're getting the Toyota quality. These can have a 3.3 V6 or a 3.5 V6, easily 30 miles per gallon on the highway. There's all wheel drive options available. They do have some third row seating. These are the kinds of cars that you buy when you just don't wanna mess with being under the hood. You, you're not a mechanic. You don't wanna think about mechanic things. You just want a car you can drive to your doctor's appointment, go to work, and it's not always broken all the time. This is where we're getting at here. This is the Lexus RX350. That is where you should go if you're looking for a reliable SUV, a mid-sized one. Now, if you go over the 09 range, the price really starts to tack on fast. You can get up to fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 fast, and maybe that's fine with you. You could spend that. But there are a lot of the older model RX series out there that are five, ten grand that are still got tons of life left in them. And if you've got a house full of rowdy children and you're worried about getting a brand new car because they might destroy the interior, again, you didn't spend a whole lot. It's going to be dead reliable and if they get Cheeto fingers all over the place, it's really not that big of a deal. You didn't spend 80 grand on it. You only spent 8 grand on it. The next one is 1998 to 2012 Ford Crown Victoria. Now I know these cars are kind of a grandpa car. I know they're not very cool, and we all know that for a long time they were cop cars. They stopped making them in 2012, so the cops aren't using those anymore. But for the longest I can remember in the 2000s, if you saw a cop, it was a Crown Vic. These cars are the epitome of bulletproof. They are dead reliable. Ford really hit the nail on the head. They really hit the bullseye here when they built a car that was reliable, comfortable, and easy to maintain. They have a 4.6 V8, they're automatic transmission. They're not as fuel efficient as some of the ones we just listed. You're probably gonna get around 25 on the highway, not 30, because it's a, a V8. Parts are very plentiful and very cheap. This is the Ford 4.6 modular V8. These things have been around for quite a while, and they just go and go and go. Again, another vehicle that gets three to 400,000 miles of life out of it. I've seen several of them that have just been beat up, especially cop cars. 
they've been run ragged and they still got 300,000 miles out of it. Just make sure you don't buy a cop car because it's very likely that they've had a rough life. They've been flying down the road, running through dirt roads, potholes. Uh, they've been through a lot. So keep that in mind if you're looking at one of those. This is called the Panther Platform. It's also the Lincoln Town Car, Mercury Grand Marquis. There's several vehicles that use this platform, but it is one of the best, if not the best platform that Ford Motor Company has ever made in the history of their company. And yes, you can get one of those others, a Lincoln Town Car or a Grand Marquis. You will get the same engine, the same reliability. It just depends on what your budget is. They're gonna cost a little more. But if you need a family car, a four-door car that rides comfortable, you don't want a tin can for a car. You want something that's got some substance to it. A Crown Vic is definitely the ticket. It's definitely a no-brainer buy. And again, five to $10,000 range, and you'll get a really nice one. The next car you guys will definitely agree with me is 1996 to the year 2000 Lexus LS400. These are getting old. They're 23 years old now for the, a 2000, but they are that reliable. There's so many still on the road. They are literally tanks. They are built beyond extremely reliable. They are so good. Very, very good. These have a 4-liter V8 and their automatic transmission. Very comfortable. The parts are plentiful because there was lots of them made. The parts are a little bit more expensive because it's a Toyota basically, but still they're out there and they're such a nice car. These have world-renowned level of reliability. Most people on the entire earth know about the LS400 and they know how good it really is. You're not going to get 30 miles per gallon on the highway with these because it's a V8. You're looking at 25, 27 on the highway, something like that. The interior is really what you should be looking at on these just to make sure it's not been decimated or beat up or smoked in or something like that. You want to make sure it's in good shape. And the reason why I chose 96 to 2000 because this is OBD2 where if you have a check engine light, your local parts store can still read the code for free and you might be able to fix a car yourself if it's fairly cheap. If we get back to 1992, 93, because they had LS400s back then, 94, 95, this is pre-OBD2 and it's gonna be a little bit harder to read the codes. But 96 to 2000 is really the sweet spot. These are a very highly desirable car. If you do find one, you're not gonna get it for two grand. It's going to be 5 to 10 and most likely near 10 because everybody wants one. They also have very cool styling. I think they look amazing. So definitely they knocked it out of the park with the LS400. You can't go wrong with that one. The sixth and final one is the 2001 to 2007 Toyota Highlander. Now this is kind of a crossover, small, in between small and medium SUV. And it is a very, very good SUV. My own father owns one. He asked me years ago what kind of car he should buy. He's looking for a little SUV. I said, go get a Highlander. You will thank me later. And he did. Years later, he thanked me. He said, he said, I'm getting to the stage in life. I'm getting older. I don't have time to constantly be finagling under the hood trying to fix stuff. There's a coolant leak. This, war this is broke. That's broke. He said, I don't have time for that anymore. And this car has served me so well. It always starts, it always runs, and it's not leaking a drop nowhere. Mrs. Wizard's sister actually had a Highlander Hybrid for a while, and it had tons of miles on it, and it's been passed down through the family already. The only thing they had to do to it was a timing belt, and it's because Mrs. Wizard told her, you better do it before it breaks, and she did it. But it's been a trooper for them as well. These can have a 2.4 four-cylinder, 3-liter, 3.3 V6. There's different options through the years and different packages that you can choose, but they're all going to be a good choice. These can get 25 to 30 miles per gallon highway. They're very fuel efficient. They have third row seating, and I can't stress enough, they're bulletproof. They really are bulletproof. Easily 300,000 miles out of one of these. That's just no question about that. And they look pretty nice. They look well made. They look stylish, somewhat stylish. No, it's not a Bentley, Bentayga or something, obviously. But it is very nice for the price, which is going to be, again, five to $10,000 for an older model one. Any of the six cars I just listed, if they've been maintained, if they've been serviced, have not been wrecked, not been flooded, 
obviously you guys need to check that on any car they are a no-brainer buy yes you should go buy one of those six you don't even have to ask me I'm telling you right now please go out and buy one of those you won't regret it but make sure to check the interior out make sure it's been taken care of it's not been shredded not had kids tear it up or literally pets urinating in it or something like that make sure that's clean as well but I thought about this recently with all the questions I've got, what kind of car should I buy or not buy? And usually they're in the five to 10,000 range. I decided to do a video, six cars. You don't even have to ask me. You don't even have to check in with me. Yes, you should go buy one of these cars. But I haven't forgot about you guys in the exotic car crowd. There's one bonus, 1999 to 2004 Ferrari 360. This is a no brainer buy if it's been serviced and maintained, not a flood car, obviously all those things. These have a 3.6 V8. They're not going to be five to ten thousand dollars. They're going to be 70, 80, 100, somewhere around in that range. But you don't have to pull the engine out to do the timing belt services on these. You pull the seats out and there's a panel behind them and you can do the full belt service in the car. They're extremely easy to work on. The parts are not cheap, but no Ferrari parts are gonna be cheap. And the car's gonna live at your house, not at my shop. It's not gonna be in the shop all the time broken. These have amazing styling, amazing sound, amazing handling. They do everything so well. The sound is just unreal, it's beautiful. The car is beautiful and they don't cost $450,000 to go buy one. These are actually comfortable to drive. Every one that I've worked on, I go and drive it. It's like, this is nice. The seats are comfortable. It doesn't ride harsh. I've gone over railroad tracks. It's comfortable. It's fast. It's beautiful. And it's cheaper than a C8 Corvette, which the Corvette is trying to mimic the Ferrari. I'm not a real advocate of the C8 Corvettes. They haven't grown on me. I don't, they don't really spark anything inside of me. I don't really get off on those, I guess, too much. But for m less money, you can have the real thing, a Ferrari, a 360. And the Ferrari is way cooler. You pull up in a C8, most people are going to be like, eh, hey, cool car, man, whatever. But if you pull up in a Ferrari, you're going to have a crowd. You're going to have people taking selfies with your car. You have people wanting to talk to you about your car. It's going to spark conversation, interest. People are going to be like, that is a sweet car, which is probably not going to happen with a C8. So hopefully this video can help you guys out when purchasing a family car or an exotic car. If you're curious what kind of tools I use in my shop to fix a lot of cars, just like I just listed, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and I really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because our project is supposed to be delivered this week. And if it is, you guys are going to see it coming up pretty soon. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.